job loss, even greater loss of income, and even greater loss of confidence. Those are deficits that could turn a crisis into a catastrophe, and I refuse to let that happen. After its Friday passage, in gangster fashion, President Barack Obama took a four-day vacation and said that there was no rush to sign it. The spending bill was really a takeover bill designed to further federalize the states and to pay off rich donors that had donated to both parties. As the world slid deeper into depression, the bankers celebrated the fire sale that they had created. I believe this, the phrase, burdens of the office, is overstated. Yeah, it's kind of like, why me? Oh, the burdens, you know. Why did the financial collapse have to happen on my watch? It's just pathetic, isn't it? Self-pity. And, and I don't believe uh, President-elect Obama will be full of self-pity. With their access to unlimited fiat capital, they could now buy up sectors of the world economy not already controlled by them. For over a century, the Anglo-American establishment had worked to bring the world system to this point. Artificially engineered global bankruptcy. In an address before the Trilateral Commission in June of 1991, David Rockefeller laid out the elite's ultimate goal the supranational sovereignty of an intellectual elite and world bankers is surely preferable to the national auto-determination practiced in the last centuries. Now that the bankers were holding the world hostage, they issued their ultimatum. The only solution to restart the global economy would be to set up a planetary government ruled by a new bank of the world. A bank of the world owned and controlled by them. Suddenly, Hundreds of prominent publications announced the solution, the people's only salvation. Time Magazine, in an article titled The New World Order, said that the new super bank would control the world's currencies and set interest rates, and that the new bank would, quote, knock the heads of bad countries like the United States. At a meeting of central bank heads and finance ministers dubbed Bretton Woods II, the plan for world government was unveiled by the very bankers that had engineered the collapse. Formerly sovereign countries would now pay their taxes directly to the banking cartel. Hundreds of new carbon taxes controlling every facet of human activity would only be the beginning. Now, all the elite had to do was to sell the public on accepting the final phase of their takeover. And it's Obama's job to sucker the public into standing down so the banker's agenda can move forward unhindered. Never before in U.S. history has the media gotten behind a president like they are behind Obama. The press has pulled out all the stops, bestowing a crown of infallibility upon Obama as the savior of the people, the elite are betting everything they've got on Obama's charisma and hoping that he can sell the world on their program of tyranny. Yes, there have been differences between America and Europe. No doubt there will be differences in the future. But the burdens of global citizenship continue to bind us together. A change of leadership in Washington will not lift this burden. In this new century, Americans and Europeans alike will be required to do more, not less. Partnership and cooperation among nations is not a choice. It is the only way. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. In truth, Obama is not simply continuing George W. Bush's policies. He is radically expanding them. I thank President Bush for his service to our nation. This film has documented the painful fact that Barack Obama's agenda is the complete opposite of what he has claimed it to be. Now we will reveal what Barack Obama and his controllers' true agenda is. Number one, bring the United States under the complete regulatory control of a private offshore superbank known as the Bank of the World. 
more than 100 new taxes are now being developed under the umbrella of curbing greenhouse gases. The new taxes will be paid directly to the private bank consortium. At the producer level, taxes will be paid on farm animals' flatulence. At the consumer level, there will be carbon taxes on all forms of meat, beef, poultry, pork and fish. All cars will be fitted with satellite tracking boxes that will tax driving by the mile. And an added tax will be placed on all fossil fuels, including motor oil and natural gas. All plastic products will have a carbon tax added. Outdoor space heaters and fireplaces are to be taxed. All electricity produced by coal-powered plants will be taxed. Under the cap-and-trade system, citizens will be forced to pay taxes on thousands of products to private cap-and-trade services owned by Al Gore and other elitists. There will be taxes on light bulbs, water, trash pickup, air travel, train travel, bus, ship, medicine, steel production, mining, clothing, laundry, asphalt are just a few of the new taxes to be levied. But to truly transform our economy, to protect our security and save our planet from the ravages of climate change, we need to ultimately make clean, renewable energy the profitable kind of energy. So I ask this Congress to send me legislation that places a market-based cap on carbon pollution and drives the production of more renewable energy in America. That's what we need. The notion of anthropogenic global warming is a fraud. In other words, the idea that the planet is getting warmer and that human activity is somehow responsible is a pseudo-scientific fraud. It's a big lie. It's a monstrosity. Remember the Nazis, they had race science, race hygiene. They said Aryan blood is different from any other kind of blood. This was, of course, idiocy, a fantastic piece of nonsense. Today, we've got something similar. Global warming caused by human activity, and the answer to that is carbon tax plus cap and trade, according to the wishes of Al Gore, Prince Charles, and basically the entire uh, world uh, banking community, the world oligarchy. What they're trying to do with that is to perpetuate the current system where bankers rule the world, financiers rule the world, and the rest of us get the crumbs from the table. But remember, if you try to put on cap and trade and a global warming uh, carbon tax with the idea that you're going to save the polar bears, what you're going to do is destroy human society. You're going to cause genocide on a massive scale. The deaths will be measured in the hundreds of millions and indeed in the billions. Just the idea of global warming means that there'll be no development for Africa, no development for the poorer parts of Southeast Asia, and no world economic recovery of any kind ever in our entire lifetime. So it's important to expose and fight the pseudo-scientific fraud of global warming. One more point about this. You don't need a climatologist to know that this stuff is a fraud. I'm a historian. I can tell you, in the last thousand years, we had a period of very warm temperatures called the medieval warm period, where all kinds of grapes and uh, semi-tropical stuff were growing very far into the northern hemisphere. That was about 1100, 1200. It happened to correspond with an all-time um, maximum of sunspots. Right now, we can say that we're going into another maximum period where there'll be some warming, but we're well within the limits of the medieval warm period. About uh, 1600 to 1650, there was an ice age in northern Europe. The North Sea was filled with ice. The German and Dutch ports and the English ports were filled with ice. That corresponds to an all-time minimum of sunspot activity, the Spurger minimum and the Maunder minimum. So this has largely got to do with solar activity. We can see that other planets, not just the Earth, are warming slightly as a result of increased solar activity. But we're well within the minimum. So what the oligarchs claim to be an open and shut scientific case is a piece of pseudo-scientific nonsense, and it should be rejected. Number two, the social engineers are fully aware that the Obama craze will wear off quickly. So they are racing to put in place the most oppressive police state control grid in human history. 20,000 battle-hardened regular army troops are now being deployed to patrol the streets of the United States. 
FEMA is now building giant camps in every region of the country. 